1 Corinthians chapter number 14. <clears throat> I was so stirred in camp meeting, and uh, you know, if you can't preach after camp meeting, then just give up and go home. <laughs> Pick up your marbles and go home, because you ain't got it. <laughs> But there's so much that was stirring in me. I just, I just believe, uh, I was actually thinking about going a different direction and uh, took a nap and woke up and boom, this was on my heart real strong. Amen. So I started meditating on it to see if, if there was further unction there and it just took off a running and I took off a typing. Right. So we're going to share some more of what Pastor Nancy was sharing and uh, to just talk about the authority we have over our past and the replay of our mind, sin consciousness, condemnation, shame, guilt. Did anybody get any help during those meetings? Oh my goodness. We all were soaking it. I was, I can tell you were soaking it in like a dry sponge, sponge that's been laying out in the heat for 35 days, you know. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter number 14. <clears throat> It just kept on coming. I cannot improve on what Pastor Nancy was preaching, but there's things that continue to stir. <clears throat> I might say some things she said, but hey, faith comes by hearing and hearing. Faith comes by hearing. That doesn't mean you don't have faith. You heard. But how many of you know we go from faith to faith? I believe that's what that may, means when it says hearing and hearing. From faith to faith. You can be walking in one degree of faith to be victorious over the, the enemy's accusations, but there's another degree. So 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 10. There, is, there are, uh, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Notice that he's telling us there's a lot of things talking to us. There's a lot of voices, a lot of voices in the natural realm, a lot of voices in the spiritual realm. Some of them aren't human, you know, where, you know, you can hear the physical, you know, audibly with your ear, you know, your physical ear. But they, these things come to us, these voices, these, uh, you know, and one of them's a voice of condemnation. Because the Bible says, you remember in Revelation chapter number 12, we'll get there maybe in a few minutes, but it says, Satan, oh, we, we overcome the accuser of the brethren. Satan's the accuser of the brethren. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. People talk about overcoming in different areas. This is a big overcoming area. Overcoming the, the accusing voices. The, uh, the memory or the replay of the past. Amen. How many of you enjoyed camp meeting, but how many of you want to hear some things about it again? I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, 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 I'm just all stirred up about this. I wanted to jump in and preach on it, but I just had a sense that uh, it, I can just wait until after she was finished saying what she said. But um, this voice of accusation uh, it comes to uh, hinder our fellowship with God, hinder our prayer life, our bold approach to God. It comes to, to neutralize our service to God. It comes to strip us of our faith. It comes to make us act different than we should be acting. You know, we act all guilty and all whenever, you know, things are under the blood already. Um, so... When it comes to fellowship with the Father, when it comes to receiving from God, when it comes to being useful to God, um, we have to choose which voice we're going to listen to or else the enemy is going to neutralize those three things. One of those or all those three things. So it's important that uh, we recognize when things are talking to us. Sometimes uh, the, the first, when we were talking about this last Sunday, really, kind of, uh, the first thing that Christians have to do is learn to recognize, oh, this thing is really, this is not just my thoughts. This is the enemy, the accuser, trying to bring things back to me. And you got to recognize that. How many of you know if you don't recognize it, then you won't deal with it right? And so really no man can stand bold in the presence of God and have a bold faith and listen to the voice that beats him down at the same time. How many of you know that accusing voice that beats you down? And uh, listening to that voice will make your faith a bloody pulp. 
it won't be worth anything. You won't be able to, uh, with, with assurance and boldness, stand in the presence of God and make your claim of faith. Because the enemy's going to come, and he's going to, you know, go over to the book, of, the book of Revelation, actually, Revelation chapter number 12. Uh, we'll look at this. Revelation chapter number 12. It says in verse number, uh, you know, we're familiar with the verses number 10 and 11. I heard a loud voice in heaven, now, is, is, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Yeah. Underline the accuser. Remember Pastor Nancy said his title reveals his activity. Yeah. The accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them. Now get this. Accuse them. This is very important that you get this next word. Before our God. Yeah. He's not just accusing you yeah. he's in, accusing you as you go before God yeah. Yeah. Wow. did you see that yeah, that's good. he's trying to keep you from being bold in faith before God because he's bringing back memory of the past right. who do you think you are praying right. for, and being so bold to think yeah. that you can receive blessings in this area of your life because you know you you know your path you know your mistakes you know how much you failed God how much you've disobeyed God how many people's lives you've messed up how unfaithful you were and just and he'll say things that are pertinent to you but are but are only a memory because they're under the blood he said remember the Bible said thy sins God said about us thy sins and iniquities will I remember no more no more he doesn't remember them anymore like somebody said it's in the sea of forgetfulness that's a, a verse in the Old Testament but somebody said uh, if it's in the sea of forgetfulness don't go fishing and don't even let the devil around that sea to, to, to throw a hook and pull that back out because he's a, he's a liar. He's an illegitimate, uh, false accuser, and uh, he's just trying to keep you from acting bold in faith. So he accuses, that's very important, he accuses them before our God. You know, don't ever let that part before our God get away from you. Uh, how prevalent is this? Does this just happen maybe three or four times in your lifetime? No. Not day and night. Come on. Come you see that? He accuses them before our God day and night. Yeah. Amen. This is a, I, wanna say a, I don't want to say a battle in the form that you got to fight it. It's, it's the battle of the good fight of faith. Yes, it's not like you got to fight the enemy, but you do have to answer him. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And this is something that's happening all the time. Um, if you uh, recognize it, you will begin to uh, answer these things. Answer feelings, impulses, suggestions. Amen. All right, let's keep going. They overcame him. This is those that, that he was accusing. They overcame the accuser of the brethren by the blood of the Lamb. You got to know something about the blood. To, in order to overcome these accusations. How, how many of you know the blood was enough? The blood was enough. The blood satisfied the, the righteous judge of all the earth. The, 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 remember, this is like a court case. It's, it's like you're going to God to plead your case. The enemy, the accuser is coming, and he's trying to uh, accuse you and say you're unworthy. He's trying to strip you of your faith. And uh, you have to, at the throne room, in order to receive, you have to know something about the blood. Yes, and you have to be good at uh, pleading the blood. Yes, pleading the blood is an old term that, uh, you know, Christians in past, Pentecostals in past generations used to say. It just simply means say what the blood says about this situation. Yes, <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you know the blood says redeemed? The blood says the past is gone. The blood says worthy. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yes, sir. Amen. And so they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And there's something more. The word of their testimony. The word of their testimony. That's what you have to say about the blood. Isn't that right? That's how you overcome him. Uh, you have to answer what he has to say. His accusing voice can't go unanswered. Isn't that right? Now, let's back up here. Uh, and, and they love not their lives unto the death. 
Now back up to verses 8 and 9 because it's, there's more information here. here. Chapter 12 of Revelation verses 8 and 9, and prevailed not. You remember Satan and his angels fought, the previous verses say, and the angels fought. And, uh, and Satan prevailed not, you underline prevailed not, because that's important in this context. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out of that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth, underline deceiveth, the whole world. So where he's trying, uh, let me finish, and he ca was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And then it says, salvation has come, and the accuser is cast down, and he said they overcame him. So us on earth overcome the accuser by the blood of the Lamb. Now notice from the context from verse number 8 and 9 it says he prevailed not and he mentions deceiving the whole world so what he's trying to do is prevail over you and me through deceptions and in the context is accusations so accusative a voice that is a lie am I, am I preaching from your Bible the, the deceiver is trying to uh, prevail over you through lying accusations, feelings, thoughts, suggestions of unworthiness. That's how he's trying to win by deceiving you. But it all has to do with accusations. <clears throat> Am I still making any sense? So what he's talking about is learning to dominate yeah. Satan in this realm yes. of his accused, uh, deceptive accusations. He can make you feel guilty when you're not. He'll make suggestions and bring feelings with the suggestions in order to try to reaffirm that what he's saying is so when it's nothing but a lie. Amen. Well, somebody said, what if I did wrong? There's still not an accusing voice from righteousness. Righteousness will convict but not accuse. Amen. If you help me this morning, we'll go ahead and preach a little bit. So the way you take dominion over your past and this accusing voice and this one that keeps reminding you of your past, you know, these video loops like Pastor Nancy was talking about, um, is, is and, and his accusations is that you apply the blood. You have to know something about the blood. Isn't that right? And you have to specifically mix your faith with what you know. That's what he means by uh, the, the word of your testimony, testifying to what the blood says. You know, it's, the, uh, it's, it's really, if you look at the language here, he's describing what we see on TV when we watch a court case. That's what he's really describing. There is, there is a plaintiff who's accusing. There is a, an accused who is going before the judge. God is the righteous judge of all the earth. And there is a, 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 a plaintiff, that's the accuser. He's bringing accusations. There is, and the accusation is before God, the righteous judge of all the earth. Amen. By the way, this thing is set because God is your father. So he's on your side, and your attorney for the defense, which 1 John 2, 1 calls the advocate. Yeah, that's what the word advocate means, an attorney for the defense. He's your older brother. So which side do you think they're on? If God be for us. Who can be against us? And then it goes down, that's Romans chapter number 8, and then it says, is, is Christ that, that died and justified us, is he going to accuse us? No. So Jesus is our, is our attorney for the defense. God, the Father, is the judge behind the bar. And uh, this is all a family ordeal. <clears throat> Satan has no rights. Now remember, God is called the righteous judge yes. of all the earth. Yes. That just simply means, if you read the Bible, that's, he's referred to that a number of times. That just simply means he will not pervert justice. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> he will not accept lies. Right? Um, really, in a court case, you've got to take the sword of the Spirit against the accuser. The Bible calls this trial the trial of your faith. 
Are you going to come bringing your faith? Faith in the blood. Or are you going to come bringing or just letting, or, or, or let's just say it this way. Are you going to come with what the accuser is saying and you putting that in your mouth? You realize when somebody gets on the judgment stand and what they say is important whenever they're being accused. And so what you say is important when you're being accused. <clears throat> Amen. So it's called the trial of your faith. It's called the, the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, a good fight's one you always win. It's one you walk away and say, that's a good fight. That's a good fight. <laughs> he threw his punches, but man, we whooped him. Remember Brother Hagin used to say, hold the enemy in the arena of faith? He's not just talking about sickness and disease, although that's, that, you got to hold him in the arena of faith there. But how about in the arena of faith with all these accusations of things that you have already put under the blood? Amen. And so um, you can get, you, you have to be good as a believer. Let me say it, let me back up and say it this way. You don't get what belongs to you at the throne of grace just because it's there and it belongs to you. Just like a, a person being falsely accused in court doesn't get justified just because the law is on their side. They have to be good at presenting the case. You get a bad attorney for the defense, and the, the, the accuser will run circles around him. You know, and, and so you, you have the best defense attorney in the world, but you got to listen to him. When he says, don't say anything else, just say this. He's your counselor for the defense. Don't wait to what the accuser is saying and say that. Wait for what your counselor is saying and just say that. Amen. And you got to get real good at uh, hearing the accuser and uh, not struggling with it. Like Pastor Nancy was talking about. Just not struggling with it because you've already got the, the truth in you. Yes. Hallelujah. And you can defy whatever and, and really answer and, and ignore whatever the accuser is saying. Yes. Amen. Amen. And keep, getting the, keep bringing out the word of righteousness. Yes. Pastor Nancy was talking about the word of righteousness because you got established in that. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something about your judge. He is still the righteous judge of all the earth. Number one, he will not pervert justice. And let me say something about perverting justice. Justice means it's not right for somebody, for, let me say, let's say, it's not right for a crime to be paid for twice. That's not just. But in the eyes of God, the righteous judge of all the earth, your sin has been paid for. When you came and you confessed it, yes. that blood was applied yes. to that sin. Yes. In other words, what the price he paid, yeah. the blood he shed yes. to, make, to, to wash you from that sin and all the guilt yeah. and all the penalty of doing without because of that sin. Yes. All of that was put on Jesus. Yeah. You got to know he paid that price. Yeah. And it's not justice to make you pay again for something that you have mixed your faith in the blood to get free from. Oh, glory. That's a miscarriage of justice to make somebody pay again. Be like you coming into uh, the grocery store and you didn't see me, uh, a few people ahead of you, uh, put you in the grocery checkout line and I say, hey, you see that good looking tall eye one back there, that good looking one back there? <laughs> Somebody identified themselves right there. <laughs> Rest of you got some work to do and you're thinking. <laughs> I say, hey, uh, put their bill on my credit card. When they get up here, you just charge my credit card. They say, okay. Guess what? If, they, if I paid for your bill, it's wrong for them to charge you for those groceries. It's wrong. That's paying twice, and that's not, that's not justice. Every now and then in, in uh, restaurants, we'll see somebody that we know or military people or somebody, policemen, and we'll pay their bill. 
I sometimes like to wait until those people leave the restaurant. If I don't have time, I can't. But, but just to make sure, because the person I'm paying for doesn't know. Right. So they could commit a fraud. The restaurant could commit a fraud on them. So I, if I can, I try to wait and just see. You know, I kind of watch out of the corner of my eye. They send in the bill to them, you know, and uh, just make sure. Because cause I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out of my seat. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yes, sir. You're charging them twice. Yes, yeah. I'm prosecuting you, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and to God, it's unjust to make you pay for something that's already been paid for. Oh, what does that do to your... Demeanor. It makes you sit up. Yeah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 And so uh, this before our God is, is uh, very important, that statement before our God. And so uh, how many of you know just because he's accusing you before your God doesn't mean you have to listen to him day and night? That's what this service is all about, how to shut this down. How many of you know he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies? And so we're, we're going to talk about that. But on the witness stand, you got to say the right thing. You got to learn to learn to be good at not listening to the accuser. Now, now listen, it, I'm talking about things that are under the blood. And so um, you, God, God, when he put your sin on Jesus, he wrote down a record of the transaction and, and put it in official documents and sent you a copy. Yes. It's called the Bible. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes, it shows a copy of your canceled debt. Yes. It has a stamp on it called paid in full. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It shows Christ's full payment and the transaction in blood and that your, your deliverance was secured through redemption. Yes. He filed it in the courthouse, course, courthouse of heaven, and he said, send earth a copy. Amen. 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 All these proceedings were written down by men inspired by the Spirit and delivered for all mankind to read in the Holy Bible. Yes, Amen. Amen. And now the benefits of that work of Christ are freely given to all who will put their faith in it. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's not enough that the Bible says certain things. You have to prove to Satan, the accuser, on proper authority and on based on legal documentations. See, you can't go to court and just say, well, I don't think this is fair. What does the law say? What does the, you, have to, you have to present what the law says. You know, you have to, you have to read... Uh, you know, which articles in the law that the, your rights are being violated by. You have to have legal standing, right? And so by, by, by really proper authority, being able to show by proper authority your legal rights and that he has no claim anymore on you by, by his accusations, you're going to be able to go free only if, you can be, only if you're good at answering with the Word of God. It's not enough for you to have the rights. You know, rights in our society can be violated if we don't stand up for our rights. And that's the way it is in the kingdom of God. Satan is illegal. He has no rights. He has been, he, we have been delivered from the authority of darkness. He has no voice into our life. Our lives belong to God. Our sin and our past is under the blood. And he has no say in this thing. But if we allow him to, he'll rob us of standing up boldly for our rights. It's, it's called the good fight of faith. Amen. Right now, it's illegal for Satan to bind you with, with uh, past things that are under the blood. Right. It's illegal for him to rob you of your faith and rob you of all the benefits that are in the blood. But you got to be good at saying, Exhibit A. Bring out a big poster that has what the Word says about it. Amen. Amen. So this is like a court case. You can see um, what, what the setting is here. And uh, you need to be good at, at ruling and reigning over that accuser. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know that, that the father will wrap the gavel and he'll say, not guilty? 
<laughs> but you got to present the case. It's not that God's hard to receive from. It's just the accuser is trying to rob you of your boldness to come and receive. Amen. The Bible presents uh, redemption in legal terms. You can't get up there and talk in terms of your feelings. You can't do that. This is a legal document, and your redemption was based on legalities. And uh, feelings have really nothing to do with it. Amen. I said amen. The Bible is a legal document. So if you learn to override your feelings and just say what the blood says, then you can win every time, even when you don't feel like you're worthy. Amen. You got to learn to do that. Amen. Um, so, but um, in order to move on here, go to Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. You know what? For time's sake, let's, uh, let's, let's save that and, and well, let's go past that. Go to Hebrews chapter number 5. Go to Hebrews chapter number 5. There's four verses I want to give you here. Pastor Nancy was getting into the, this a bit. But I want to take this and, and just keep on running with it. Hebrews chapter number 5, verses, uh, well, we'll just read verse number 13 for time's sake. Hebrews 5, 13. Everyone that uses milk, he's talking about baby Christians who are still on the milk of the Word, uh, is unskillful, now notice this, in the Word of righteousness. Yeah. Underline that term, the Word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's unskillful. Notice that unskillful. I should have had you underline unskillful as well in the word of righteousness. Satan, um, Satan cannot make you unrighteous, but he can make you unskillful in the word of righteousness. In other words, whenever he comes with accusations. Are you following me? Yes. So, now, with that in mind, go to 2 Timothy. I want you to get this, this terminology, unskillful in the word of righteousness. And then 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 16. 2 Timothy 3, 16. You all awake this morning? Yes, sir. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Now, here's what it's profitable for, for doctrine. That means teaching, and that's another word for teaching. For reproof. For correction, we all know what that's like. Then he said this, for instruction in righteousness. Now, you never become any more righteous than you were the day you got born again. When you got born again, you're like a child who is born, you know, a family has a child in the church and a newborn baby is born. You never look at that, you never pick that baby up and, 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 and begin to hold it and say, poor child, all the things it did in its past. He has no past. I said, it's gone. There is no past. When you got born again, there is no past. That needs to dawn on some of us. It's gone. Well, yeah, it's all that I did since. Yeah, 1 John 1, 9. Faithful and just. If we confess our sins, faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us, notice, from all, all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. If you're cleansed of all unrighteousness and you're back to what he made you originally, which is, the, remember 2 Corinthians 5, 21, made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. God. That's God's righteousness. Not your righteousness or my righteousness, but God's righteousness. That's high class right there. That's first class. That's not economy, economy class. That's first class. And when we confess, when we, we miss it, we've all missed it. But whenever we miss it and we confess it, He cleanses us from all unrighteousness and He puts us back in first class righteousness. Not economy class. Where they act like they don't even want you there. You say, they really do? Yeah, if you've ever flown in first class, you know the difference between how they act towards you in economy and how they act in first class. In first class, you're a somebody. In economy, you're in their way. <laughs> you're a bother. <laughs> Sit down. Shut up. <laughs> you know, 
in first class is, how you doing, sir? Actually, it's not, sir. How, good, good afternoon, Mr. Eberly. Can I take your coat? Would you like something to drink? Are you comfortable? Would you like a blanket? You know what I'm talking about? That's first class, and that's what God made us, first class. His righteousness. And that's what's restored back to us. And then he said here, uh, in other words, I'll go back to what I said. You can't be any more righteous than you were the day you were born again. Amen. And it's the righteousness of God. It was applied to you by faith. It was a gift, not something you earned. Oh, my goodness. Don't be counting the lights right now. God's got something for you. All Scripture is given. This is 2 Timothy 3.16. By inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, I read that word, instruction in righteousness. I always read that education in righteousness. That I might be educated in righteousness. I'm not more righteous, but I can be more educated in it. I can be more trained in it. I can be my, more schooled in it. I can renew my mind to it. I can feed those truths into my spirit and school my spirit in that reality and that consciousness to where there's no accusing voice hanging over my head day in and day out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible means when it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Part of the word of Christ is the word of righteousness. The word of righteousness. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. You are worthy to receive. Worthy to. No, I know I'm on so many things I've failed, Pastor. No, wait a minute. I didn't say worthy on your merits. No, not on your merits. On his merits. <laughs> Don't just hear this like a good sermon this morning. Take this in and open up to the light of it like a flower in the sunshine. And let your heart agree. Say, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So getting this message in your spirit will give you the knowledge of righteousness and educate your spirit in this. I didn't say your spirit's not righteous, but you, you got to train your spirit. You got to train it just like a baby that's born. You got to train it. It has everything. Think about us. We're born spiritually like a baby is born naturally. It's a complete human being. Every part is there. Everything is right. It's the way it's supposed to be. But that baby still has to be trained. Trained to walk, trained to do everything, trained to take care of itself, all that. So your spirit has to be trained, and it can be. And, and the Word of God is how you train that. And it'll, put, it'll put, fill you with the knowledge of right standing with God. And it'll renew your mind to it so that that accusing voice is just not hanging over your head. You know, that can hang over your head for years until the light of the Word comes, and revelation comes. And you not even know it until the Word reveals something you've been thinking wrong about. I was born again when I was 10 years old. I'll never forget it. The very next day, and, and it was like a 10-ton weight rolled off of me of guilt and shame. It's almost like, I mean, if you hear people say this, this, this was what happened to me. It was almost like, you know, the birds were singing and I never heard them before. The sun, I never seen the sun shine like that before. It just, the day was totally different. It was... I mean, I don't mean that that's just, you know, that's just some feelings and so forth, but, but, but I was different on the inside. And I'll never forget it. My brothers were back painting fence. My mom said, go help them paint fence. So I went back there, and they said they were picking on me and accusing me. I don't know, remember, remember not accusing, but just picking on me, you know how brothers do. And I got mad at them and flew off the handle and said something. And one of my brothers said, well, I thought you got saved. If you, ever got, if you really got saved, you wouldn't act that way. Just spoke for the devil. You're laughing. It was not a funny matter. A dark cloud of condemnation hit me and stayed on me until I sat in righteousness class at Rhema. I lived with that thing. It became normal. Although for the believer, it's not supposed to be normal. Listen to me. It can be a part of a person's life for decades and they never recognize it. 
That's why you need to soak. Remember I said we need to soak in this, marinate in this, think on this, meditate on it. Because unless the Spirit of God opens it up to you, you don't see what you've been living under. I sat in righteousness class, and the light started coming, coming, started coming. I'm like, oh, I'm seeing it. And the next class, more came. The next class, more came. And I started seeing it, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger on the inside of me. Finally, that thing was just broken off of me because I knew the truth, and the truth made me free. <clears throat> Hallelujah. See, my spirit and my mind were educated in righteousness. That's what the Scripture is inspired by God to do. Oh, thank God. Amen. Unless your mind or your spirit are educated in righteousness, by fault, it's schooled in your past failures. By, by default, excuse me. It's schooled in your past failures. Amen. And those past failures can create reactions to the present that nobody can explain why you're acting the way you're acting. You don't even understand why you're acting the way you're acting. Are you still out there? Yes. So um, this, this, this education has to happen. Yes. This renewing of the mind, this training of the spirit. Yes. Amen. 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 And so uh, being free from something means that the past isn't affecting your present. Amen. Amen. Are you still there? Yes. You may remember it historically that it happened, but it's not affecting your present. Yes. Pastor Debbie, this morning, I thought it was so interesting this morning. She just out of the blue mentioned it, and I never, <laughs> I never heard her talking about it. Yeah, she had it on her heart. But um, she said the other, when was it recently? You looked at a video. Oh, it was last night. You, she watched a video of President Reagan giving a speech to a large crowd. And I remembered it. I had forgotten all about it. And so I remembered that this was actually after he had been, the assassination attempt had been on his life. You remember that? And he's, you know, recovered now. He's out of the hospital, and he's out, uh, you, know, you know, functioning as he should as yeah. the president again. And he was giving a speech to a large crowd. Yeah. And uh, whenever he was giving this speech, a balloon popped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't even flinch. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't duck behind the podium. Uh -huh. yeah. Come on now. You understand? Yes. He didn't run out of the room. No, right. He just smiled and said, miss me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. What the devil had tried to do did not get inside of him. The past was not affecting his present. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how free you can be from your past. Historically, he remembered that the assassination attempt happened, but it's not affecting his reactions. It's not making him act different than he used to act. Whew, glory be to God. And you could tell by how easy it was, he just smiled and said, miss me. He made a joke of it. It was just a balloon popping. <laughs> but you could tell how easy it was by the video that he wasn't struggling. Pastor Nancy was talking about struggling. You could tell by that video, he wasn't struggling with that. Yes, oh, glory be to God. He was far from oppression and from fear. <laughs> really, President Reagan was a faith man. Yes. Most people know that. And so he didn't have an emotional reaction to his past hounding him. He didn't behave like he never behaved before and act like a coward and hide behind the podium or something like that. Amen. And you could tell he wasn't trying to fix a different behavior. You know what I mean? He didn't go, whoa, okay, okay, I get myself together. No, he wasn't trying to fix it. He had already been established. And, 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 and he wasn't afraid. Oh, that's what the Word of God will do for you. That's what the blood will do for you. That's what the knowledge of righteousness will do for you. You might have done some terrible, awful, hurt, heinous things to people in the past, but be totally free from it. Oh, you didn't hear that. You can be totally free from it. Not just forgiven, but it's not affecting your reactions in the present. 
it's not you. It's the old man. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. The past had not changed his inward man. I'm talking about brother, uh, brother, yeah, he was brother, but President Reagan. The past had not changed his in inward man. And you can see he wasn't struggling with what had happened to him, you know. Amen. The devil had not gotten it on the inside of him. Hallelujah. It wasn't affecting his present reactions. <clears throat> Revel uh, Romans 1.17 says, you know, therein in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. We're talking about righteousness. It's revealed from faith to faith. It didn't say you become more righteous from faith to faith, but you do gain and grow in revelation of your righteousness from faith to faith. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, one of the things about pastoring is that sometimes, not that you ask, but sometimes because of whatever happens and when it happens and you're a part of it or whatever, um, you, you know things people have done. Uh -huh. But, but it's, it's, it's what the, one of the great blessings of pastoring is watch people get up, Amen. shake themselves, and, and go, I'm free from my past. Amen. Amen. That blesses us. Yeah. And that blesses the heart of your father. Because you believe the blood was enough. You don't need to be guilty or act unworthy for three weeks or three months in order to pay penance. That's really penance is what that is. Come on. See, the blood was enough. You have faith in that blood. You got, and, and that is so pleasing to the heart of your Father. Amen. So pleasing to the heart of your Father. And, and to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's honoring the blood that He shed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And because of that, it pleases us. But you know, the most important thing is that you please God. We're not worth anything to God. And I don't mean not valuable to God, but I mean not, we're not useful to God or can't be used by Him if we're all beat up, guilty, ashamed, talking about how bad we treated somebody. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Woo! Glory. There's a company that drives trucks around town. I don't know if it's local or maybe, maybe international. I don't know how big the company is. It's, it's a maintenance company or something. They do a little maintenance project, and it's called Dun Dun. Yeah. You ever seen that? Yeah. It's not done till it's Dun Dun. I tell you, when Jesus washed it away, it's Dun Dun. Dun Dun. <laughs> dun Dun. Done, done. Praise be to God. So you don't grow in righteousness, but you do grow in your revelation of it. And get this, you grow in your skill of walking in the privileges that it provides. Oh, you got to get that. You grow in the skill and walking in the privileges that it provides. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? Pastor Nancy was talking about this, the, the, the privileges. Remember? In righteousness, you'll be established. And you'll be far from oppression. Far from oppression of that hounding voice saying you're not worthy to, to stand before God and receive. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And there's more to that. We'll get to it if we can. So um, uh, in your awareness of righteousness, you can grow in your awareness of righteousness and in the skill of growing in his, uh, or operating in His privileges. And that includes freedom from oppression, freedom from the harassment of the accuser, and you become proficient at reigning yeah. in righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. They that receive the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, reign in life. Yeah. Yeah. But you're reigning through righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Or through your, your, your established, your, your, your uh, being established in the knowledge of your righteousness. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. good? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, Isaiah, let's read those verses that I was telling you. I was going to give you four verses. I gave you... Um, 
I gave you uh, 2 Timothy 3, 6 and Hebrews 5, 13. I want you to, these are the main verses today, and I want you to just feed on these. Hebrews 5, 13 talks about being skillful in the word of righteousness. 2 Timothy 3, 16 talks about being established or instructed and educated in righteousness. And then Pastor Nancy used Isaiah 32, 17. The work of righteousness shall be peace. Now here's the word that stands out to me, the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. I want you to see that word effect. The knowledge of righteousness is to have an effect on you. Actually, righteousness will have an effect on you, but, but not if you don't have any knowledge of it. The devil will lie and say, yeah, but you're not the righteousness of God. And so the, the intended effect is not there. So really the effect of getting established in righteousness, getting an education in righteousness, like that verse said, we've just read, that's, that, that effect is gained by gaining Bible knowledge of this kind of righteousness. It's a revelation that you must receive of this particular kind. And what is the effect? You'll be far from oppression. Go to... Uh, uh, Isaiah chapter number 54, verse number 13 and 14. Pastor Nancy read these, but listen, we need to stew in these till all the juices in it get in us. <laughs> Jocelyn got it. I don't know if anybody else got that or not. When you've do, anybody ever done a stew, you put a beef stew, you put beef, uh, chopped up beef in there, and then you put potatoes and, and probably carrots and whatever, your onions, whatever else you're putting in there, and the beef broth and so forth, and you just stew it till the flavor gets all through it. That's what we're doing this morning. We're just turning the heat up again and stewing in righteousness. So we're going to come out of church smelling. <laughs> Smelling good like righteousness. So <laughs> Isaiah 54, 13, that goes, how many of you know they start cooking that? It goes all through the house. Righteousness is supposed to go all through your house and your thinking, the way you respond to your children, your spouse. It gets in everything. When the devil goes boo, you go, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Isaiah 54, 13 and 14, she, she read both of these. We want to read both of them again. All the children, or all thy children, shall be taught of the Lord. Underline taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shall they be established. So this happens through the teaching. Being taught righteousness. In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Okay, here's these effects. Far from oppression. Thou shalt not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Wow. <clears throat> Praise God. Any fear dogging you? Any oppression dogging you? You've not gone far enough in the teachings of righteousness. Keep on going in the teachings of righteousness because over here's oppression, over here's the teachings and the knowledge of righteousness. The further you go towards the teaching of the knowledge of righteousness, the further you get from oppression. And listen, it's so far away that it'll be as if it wasn't even you anymore. One is so far from the other. Praise be to God. <laughs> so it's supposed to have an effect. Righteousness consciousness gives men access into, access, access, excuse me, into the ability of the new creation that has really been there all along. You're not getting abilities through righteousness or, or through the knowledge of righteousness. You got that when you became the righteousness of God in Christ. But you understand, it gives you, in the sense, access to those abilities. Knowledge is big in the kingdom of God. Amen. So um, when, you get, when you get filled with the word of righteousness, it has a replacement effect. It pushes out sin consciousness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This knowledge cannot be in the heart of a man with sin consciousness at the same time. One pushes out the other. Which one are you going to feed in the most and give it the most chance to get in you? 
So um, when, when, when righteousness, consciousness comes in, con- self-consciousness goes out. Right. You know that one of the biggest sources of fear is self-consciousness? Of course, the enemy's behind that. You understand. But I'm simply saying, you know, like public speaking. When I first started speaking in front of people, I was very fearful. I mean, I was very conscious of people looking at me and, you know, I'm just... That's because I was thinking of myself rather than this message I got to deliver. God, when you, when, if you want to be free from, you know, public speak, fear of public speaking or getting in front of people or something like that or, or taking a leadership responsibility, a higher paying leadership responsibility to your job or so forth, you know, so forth, and I don't want to be, I'm afraid I might mess up so forth. Get rid of self-consciousness and get full of righteousness, con- who you are in Christ. Amen. Praise God and all the privileges that go along with that. I'm going to read a statement, and you probably are not going to catch all this because I'm going to say it fast, and I don't want to take the time to give you time to write it down. Go back and listen to it. But listen to this. The Lord spoke this to me. All inferiority complexes, intimidation, bad self-image, or insecurities come from sin consciousness. Being established in righteousness frees you from a sense of inferiority in the presence of anyone or anything. You have no sense of weakness. I'm talking about in in righteousness, consciousness. No sense of weakness or helplessness or being alone or having a lack of faith. You have no sense of hesitation or uncertainty. No sense of, of being at odds with God, but a sense of peace and of being united with Him. Righteousness has no sense of rejection of being held outside of something or, or of anything that God has or knows. Righteousness gives you a sense of access and belonging and rights to God and His presence. A sense that He tells me everything and will give me anything. A sense that God withholds, noth- withholds nothing. He, keeps, uh, he never keeps secrets from me. The sense that he accepts what I say in the earth because he has accepted me to reign on his behalf and in his stead under himself with no inferiority of him. Righteousness sets you free from a victim mentality. People who are always talking about how they've never had any breaks or any good luck. They're talking about all their tribulations and perils. They are not established in righteousness. Righteousness has a more than a conquering spirit of faith. Righteousness does not say, oh, if Jesus was just here. Remember, that's Romans 10, 6. Say not in thine heart. What shall we say to these things? Previously in the chapter 8. Then he said, say not in thine heart, who shall send up to heaven that is bring Christ down. Nobody ever says that unless they say something like, if Jesus was just here, he'd do something about this. You know why he's not here? Because you are. Amen. Do you know you have the same standing with the Father right now as Jesus has? To many people, that's heresy. But the Bible said we're the righteousness of God. We didn't earn it. We were made the righteousness of God. So righteousness, consciousness doesn't say, oh, if Jesus was just here. Righteousness has a complete different demeanor as it approaches the presence of God. But righteousness also changes the way you stand in the presence of devils, sickness, circumstances, failure, and shame. Romans 8.31 says, what shall we say to these things? The context there is what he had just said in verse number 29, 30, uh, including righteousness. In other words, righteousness, consciousness has something to say. And it's different than what you used to say. (laughs) Amen. What shall we say to these things? If God before us, who can be against us? So what shall we say to righteousness? But righteousness, consciousness then also has something different to say to all these things that come against us. Remember, uh, Paul said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Praise be to God. 
I don't know how you can sit there like that. <laughs> what shall we say to these things? So righteousness causes you to say something different than when sin consciousness was dominating you. It'll make you talk different. You won't sound like a worm. Like Pastor Nancy said, you won't start every prayer with, Lord, forgive us for all our sins. That's sin consciousness. Or, 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 or uh, you know, I probably missed it somewhere. If you did, you know it. Well, I just don't know. Maybe, I don't know maybe where I missed it. If you don't know it, you're not responsible and not guilty. Oh, glory be to God. Righteousness consciousness has a whole different sound. It doesn't have a whine in it. Amen. But the solution to these, these things, you know, inferiority in the presence of demons and so forth, the solutions to these things is knowledge of God's righteousness. Amen. Praise God. Well, did you get anything out of that this morning? Praise God. Your debt has been paid. I said your debt has been paid. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. So, um, let's go over to a couple of verses here in Hebrews. Let's see here. Well, let me see where I can. Hmm. I'll tell you this. Righteousness prays a whole lot different than sin consciousness. Can we spend a few minutes on that? James chapter 5, verse number 16 talks about the prayer of the righteous. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man, a righteous man avails much. Well, you can be righteous and not know it or not be established in it and your prayer still doesn't avail much. The prayer of the righteous is found in Genesis 18, 17. I mean, it's found in the New Testament quite a bit too. Don't misunderstand me. It's found actually in Luke chapter number 11. We were talking about it, I think maybe whenever it was, one of the services <clears throat> where Jesus gave us what we call the, uh, the Lord's Prayer. And then he gave that parable of a friend who came at nighttime, knocked on the door, and his children are sleeping. You know, lend me three loaves, friend of mine's come, so forth. He said he won't get it, get it because uh, he was a friend. That means they're in covenant covenant terms there but he said he'll get it because of his importunity which every, every I don't I don't get it every Greek help I've looked up concerning importunity means boldness brassness it has nothing to do with ask and keep on asking all right, all right. yet every translation tries to translate it ask and keep on asking it's just wrong translation so um, he's talking about prayer and why you get things why you get things? Because you just have the brass to come and say, I see, so, I see in this legal document that you gave me <laughs> that I have a right and a privilege. Yes, yes, yes. So those who are established in righteousness, they pray different. Amen. So... <clears throat> Let's look at a couple of verses here. I'm almost done. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Verses I want you to take and meditate on them. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness. Now get this. And sin not. Some have not the knowledge of God. You could say the knowledge of righteousness. I speak this to your shame. Awake. He didn't say become righteous. He said, awake to it. He's talking to people who are already the righteousness of God in Christ. He said, wake up to the fact that you're righteous. <laughs> Last night, that pesky coon came on my, my porch again. I don't know how long he was up there, but I have a, because he's been trying to paw or get, pull the siding off at one spot. I don't know what, why, but he came back trying to get it. So I have this kind of a ladder leaned up against there so he can't get in there. And it's not another ladder holding it against the wall. <laughs> more information than you asked for but anyway <laughs> last night I had gone to sleep at like 11:30, and I'm just you know you, after a couple of hours you're in the deep part of your yeah, sleep yeah. and I'm in my deep part of my sleep and I'm dreaming about a noise boom 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 <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm just I'm, and I'm and I heard I heard her get up or lean up in the bed uh -huh. 
And it woke me up, and I'm like, I'm dreaming, boom, boom, boom. And then outside, I hear boom, boom, boom. And that ladder's bumping, hitting the wall. There's a coon out there again. Well, he was, all, he was out there before I was awake, but I just woke up to the fact he's out there. And he said, wake up to righteousness. Right? You are the righteousness of God. Wake up to it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you wake up to it, you'll do things like this will be inside of you. Job 33, 26. I'm not going much longer. <clears throat> Job 33, 26. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Now, the, the context here is righteousness. And you can even see it in this verse. But here's what he said, righteousness, he said, will, will be like. He will pray, he pray, this is the Amplified, 33, 26. He prays to God and he is favorable to him. So that he sees his face with joy. For, why? Why does God see his face with joy? God restores to him his, or God's, righteousness. His uprightness and right standing with God with its joys. Ooh. Ooh. Mamma mia, Papa Pia. <laughs> Righteousness has some joys. And they're not all in the heart of the man. Some of them are in the heart of God. He sees his face with joy. Because he sees himself, his own righteousness in us. And he sees us coming and he clicks his heels and said, Jesus, look, he's coming again. We get to fellowship with the righteousness that we have made our, our son or our daughter. Oh, glory. And he loves it. He loves it. He loves it. It's interesting that righteousness, consciousness runs to God. Doesn't shrink away from him. Like, remember Adam and Eve? Pastor Nancy was talking about Adam and Eve. This is really a prophecy of the new birth. The restoration of, of righteousness. Now, if you really look at this, is the restoration of answered prayer. Did you get that? Yes. It's a restoration of answered prayer. Of course, restoration of God's fellowship. But the context here is uh, he, the, the, the answers of prayer. In fact, you see it a little clearer in the, I mean, in the King James. It means that God's filled with joy to see your face. Now, what are you coming for? You're coming to fellowship with Him. You're coming to love on Him. But you're also coming to lay claim to what belongs to you. And God doesn't hide and say, oh, they're coming again. Let's go over here. Maybe they won't find us. No, he said they're coming to get something. Yeah. Yeah. Love this when he comes. Love this when he comes. Amen. Praise God. There's no swat on the wrist for coming and being a receiver. Praise God. And there's no shame. Wow, wow, wow. That's got to dawn on you. And your, your spirit has to open up to that like a flower in the sunshine. Praise be to God. Ephesians 3.12 in the Amplified. Ephesians 3.12 in the Amplified. In whom, that's in Christ, because of our faith in Him, we dare, oh, okay, wow, 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 we dare to have the boldness, courage, and confidence of free access and unreserved approach to God with freedom and without fear. Dare. That's a faith word right there. When the devil says, you're not worthy, you're real daring. You boldly say, no, I'm the righteousness of God. I, I like that. Amen. To shrink, to shrink back from a bold, daring faith in the presence of God means you're still dealing with the awareness of what the devil is saying. And it's making your faith weak. Fight that good fight. Get past that. Get established in the word of righteousness. The Bible says we're supposed to come boldly to the throne of grace. There's no other way to please him. 
coming sheepishly, all beat up, rehearsing the lies of the enemy. I've got to uh, tell a story before we quit. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus, for reminding me about it. Um, this is the answer for all past hounding failures and past wrongdoings and past traumatic things and everything. You remember Pastor Nancy was saying, you know, Hebrews 9, 14 talks about the, purge, the cleansing of the conscience, the purging of our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The blood purges our conscience. Remember she said one commentary says, that it's the, the, the purging of the conscience means the purging of the replay of the mind. Anybody know? When she said that, does anybody kind of identify with, with what the enemy tries to do? He just tries to bring it back and bring it back and bring it back. Um, somehow, I'll just, I'll just, a, a person, let, let, let me say it this way. A couple of people in the church had a relative that died a um, little bit unexpectedly. It was early, but it wasn't, it wasn't really all that expected because they had some conditions and so forth, but it, it was a little early and a little bit unexpected on the timing of it. Uh, and uh, the, it was a brother and then an uncle, uncle-in-law, I don't know how that all works. But this particular man was saved. They had led him to the Lord, but he had been in, I think it was Vietnam, and, and uh, seen many tra tra traumatic horrendous things and probably participated in some of them you know how they under command remember what Pastor Nancy said under command and so uh, this particular man was traumatized by that and when he went to heaven I think he was in his was it early 60s I, I want to say I hope I'm not saying that wrong but that's generally somewhere in there where his age frame was and uh, he, he was troubled, a very troubled kind of person, very emotionally uh, given to upheavals and so forth. Uh, they, the world has a term for it. It's called PTSD. Um, but the blood is greater than PTSD. Um, but he never, he got saved, but he never really started the process of the washing of the water of the Word to get some of that or get all of that. Thank God for the blood that can get all of that out and putting faith in the blood and faith in the Word that can get all of that out. Um, and so he was troubled all his life. And, and you could tell it being around him. I've been around him a couple times and you can see, and so, you know, people just sort of looked out for him, understood what had happened and his friends sort of looked out for him and so forth and sort of helped him out in those, when he was being, un, you know, under that attack. But he lived that way all his life. Thank God he got saved. Yeah went to heaven I don't know it was maybe a week or two or something like that after he went to heaven one of the relatives that are here in the church um, had a dream and in the dream they saw him coming dying and coming up out of that house where he lived uh, and and rising up ascending up to God and he came from a laying position I believe up to uh, you know, he started ascending where his head started going higher than his body. You know how, you know what I'm saying? And while he was ascending up, they could see a mask on his face. And they just thought it was a mask at first. Um, and the more they watched this happen, the mask fell away. As he ascended up, the mask fell away. And um, the, his, his face shone and began to shine with the radiance of the joy of the Lord. He started having the joy of the Lord. The mass started falling away, and, uh, and, the, and the glory of God just came all over him. The joy of the Lord came on him, and he started rejoicing. Yeah. Now, that wasn't him in the flesh. Yeah. He was very oppressed. Yeah. But as the mass fell away, and this person that saw the dream, had the dream, watched it, the mass fell away, he just thought it was a mask. As it fell away, he noticed it had little feet and little hands. And as he watched it, he could see it was a demon. And as the mass fell away, the mask fell away, he could, it would turn, you know, it's fallen away back to the earth, and it was turning. And as it turned, the one saw, that was seeing the dream could see the backside of the mask, and it was a TV screen. And it was playing old scenes from Vietnam over on repeat, over and over and over again. And even not only that, but other people that had done him wrong. It was just playing that over and over and over and over again. 
Remember last time we were talking about the oppression of the mind? That's the oppression of the mind. And it also falls in line with that commentary of the replay. Satan will bring back the past and try to replay it. Why? To oppress your mind. And that's exactly what that man was living under. That was not the real him. The real him was a new creation in Christ. But see, you've got to have the washing of the water of the word to, uh, and apply faith in the blood to stop that video recording and that harassment through the video recording. And guess what? You do not have to wait until you die to, to be free from that. You do not have to wait until you die. I said, you do not have to wait until you die. That can happen. You can be free from that replay in this life right now. Right now. Praise God. I said, praise God. The Bible says no uh, revelation of the Spirit, you could say, is given for private interpretation. That was revealed for all of us. Doesn't that give you more light into how Satan tries to work? I don't glorify the enemy in that. I say God showed us that so we could know what these things really are all about. And we could also know you don't have to wait till you die. You don't have to wait till you die. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, we thank you, Lord. 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 The devil will take advantage even of a believer if a believer will let him. How does a believer let him? By refusing to do what's necessary to get the knowledge of the truth. Just gives the devil the opportunity to continue to bind us. How about Spirit of Faith Family Church be a church where none of that, none of that prevails in any of our thought life? Glory be to God. Where we learn how to answer that. We learn, we get established in the knowledge of the truth. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Say it out loud. Freedom is mine. Freedom is mine. And it's mine right now. Right now. Woo, glory be to God. <laughs> Freedom right now, right now, right now, right now. When the devil tries to come back with a picture or a video of your past, you say, Mr. Devil, that's gone. All you have is a photograph. All you have is a video. And I plead the blood of Jesus. I put faith in the blood. That's gone. And I am free from that. And, and, and when you use your faith, the devil will try to push play again. And nothing will come up. The blood erased the video. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> 